In this demonstration, we're going to look at the baked-in Riot.js observable method. We're also going to look a little bit at the Bixen method. Using the people list tag, let's say we wanted to create a second tag that would tally people older than 60 and less than 20. This tag would theoretically live outside the people list tag and be in some sort of header, footer, or sidebar. Because we need our people list and people count tag to communicate, we need something that empowers them to talk to one another. You may have heard of things like Flux or PubSub. Riot's observable method gives us a very slim and easy way to implement basic communication. Now that we have our basic and mostly unfinished people count tags, we need to emit or broadcast data to it and populate our count array. The way that we can do this is by creating a Riot observable. I created a new file called people list observable, and the first thing I'll do is import Riot. Next, I'm going to export this as a function and call the Riot observable method, which basically turns this function into an observable I can use later. Then I create a private function called setCountStore. This function is responsible for implementing any logic required and passing data to our observers. This store function will be invoked when an action named setCountAction is triggered. Let's go ahead and add the people count tag to my index.html. As you can see, it's adjacent to the people list tag. Because I want to communicate between these two tags, I need to make my observable available to both. First, I'm going to import my people count tag to make it available to my application. Next, I'm going to go ahead and import my observable. To make our observable share between tags, Riot.js has a convenient mixin method to declare a global mixin and include throughout our application. I'm going to go ahead and mount our people count tag even though it's not quite ready. As you can see, the mixin method allows for us to attach any type of data type to a string for later use. We can mix in or add functionality to our tags just by calling on that same string within our tags. Now that our mixin is in place, we need to go ahead and write the necessary logic to utilize it. First, I'm going to set up a private function within people list that generates the array I would like to send to the people count. As I mentioned earlier, I like to show a tally of all the old farts, whippersnappers, and total amount of people being displayed. To do this, I can use the old farts and whippersnappers methods above to filter and return a count. Now that we have our count array function in place, we need to determine when we want to fire it. At this point, I think it's best to say we would like to update the count when a person is added or deleted from the list. The trigger method you see here will trigger our set count action event within our observable and pass the result of our count array function. Our setCountAction calls our store function with the pass in array and does any logic required and then triggers the setCountStore event which we'll be listening for in our tag. Let's go ahead and add this. As you can see, our people count tag displays the information we're looking for. However, it only shows after we've added or deleted a person. Let's fix this. And there you have it. We've used the baked in mount event to trigger our action after the people list tag is rendered. Now, there's obviously many ways to structure something like this, and by no means am I saying this is the perfect way, but as you can see, it's very flexible and works well. 
As a side note, there's a package called Riot Control that I highly recommend checking out. I encourage you to try things to see what works best for you and your team. Thanks for watching.